So it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out for the show today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So before we get into your esteemed life as an author and 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 all of these things that make you who you are, I want to know, you know, four, four and a half years ago, we were dealing with this pandemic, and I know we're probably getting tired of talking about it, but it was such a big deal. How yeah. did you get through that time period, and how has it changed the way that you do things now? Well, <clears throat> Well, actually, I came through that period without getting COVID. <laughs> wow. And, uh, you know, I was I was forced to take vaccinations because I traveled to Denmark. I at, at that point, I lived in Canada. OK. I've been living in Canada for 17 years and just moved back to Denmark three months ago. <clears throat> But uh, of course, the, the the social events was very limited in 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 that period. So, but I did some uh, uh, you know Zoom consultations and and seminars uh, uh, to get by. That's that's how I did that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do on a daily basis. Um, as an author and, and everything that you do. So what I want to do is put you in front of a bunch of grade school kids. It's third graders, 10, 11 years old, and it's career day. And one of the kids is curious and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? Oh, <laughs> oh that, that's a difficult uh, question. Of course, <clears throat> I've, I've written this book. I, I co-authored another one and published a third one. Uh, so that's basically... Um, what I do most, but I also do uh, consultations, seminars, lectures, and workshops. Okay. You know, working with people are focused on their own voice, actually. So even though <clears throat> it's very esoteric system, which uh, <clears throat> uh, the voice is the most powerful tool we have for transforming ourselves and uh, expanding our consciousness we can actually work with the energies in our body in our physical body and emotional body and the mental body through our voice if we know how to do it so and this this system i'm writing about uh, it's called vibrational sound and color was was actually invented by uh, my late husband Elias de Mohan, who lived most of his life in in uh, in the states, actually. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, he he invented this uh, system where he picked out some vowel sounds that frequencies. Uh, 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 how do you say? Well, English is my second language, so sometimes uh, my Danish brain gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. But these uh, free, different frequencies of the voice corresponds to different life areas or what we call chakras. So we can work with, with different uh, um, blockings we have or shortcomings or, or something we want to develop in ourselves. So we can work with that through the voice. And, and uh, he combined that <clears throat> vowel sound with a color that also correspond to her chakra. So, and uh, actually uh, sound and color are different frequencies of the same thing. Yeah. So, so by using a certain color and a certain vowel sounds, you actually <clears throat> approach the same theme from two sides. Wow. It's, yeah. So it's very it's very unique, uh, actually. And uh, he also he changed uh, the colors of the chakras. You know, the normal Western perception of the chakras you know it, it's following the rainbow colors uh, but but he changed that because 
it's a very it's a very practical system and you know the first book uh we wrote together actually rewrote his first book he he uh, it it's a self uh, uh, well all the exercises of the seven chakras there is explained how to do it yeah. and uh, also explaining the esoteric philosophy around sound and color so so you can just take the book and you can read it and you can do it you know you don't you don't need a really uh, to 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 connect with a teacher you can just you can just do the exercises and experience how how it 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 feels so and so in my new book uh, i also describe some uh, exercises some meditations actually so people can can and just pick the book up and read about it and try it out, you know. Can you show us a copy? You got a copy there with you? Yeah, I. Uh, this is the new book. It's right. called uh, "Journey Towards Soul Consciousness." Yeah. And um, well, there is a reason why I I I picked that title, "Journey Towards," because. I cannot define what soul is. <laughs> I haven't met anybody who could, yeah. uh, you know. So, so it, but it's all about the journey. Every everybody has to experience their own process. That's that's one of my major uh, what I want to give to people. You know, to to. Mm, to make them believe in in that they can do they can do it yeah. they can do it themselves and you know this is not this is not a system that demands a guru or a master or anything you know i encourage people to uh, uh to take what they can from this system and put it together with what else they have experienced yeah. of good things that help them so they can actually make their own system. That is the most prominent thing I can, I wish for people. Do your own system. Yeah. And you can take from there and there and there and put it together and shape it into what you feel like. You know, instead of many other systems, you know, you, the student have to adapt to a system but many times they leave themselves trying to be something they are not. Yeah. So I want to go the other way around. Yeah. Say, you have to be who you are. Both the good and the bad. Actually, the bad things are very good because that is the stepping stones in, in expanding our consciousness. You know, everything starts with that. So that that is a uh, yeah so in 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 this new book journey towards soul consciousness i devote quite uh, some pages on 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 the ego what we call the ego yeah because uh, you know if you are on a spiritual process you know you you definitely have to know something about how does the ego function what mechanisms is uh, driving uh, uh, and supporting the ego? Because if you don't know the difference between your ego and your, what, what can we say, higher self, you are bound to go in a circle. You don't go anywhere. You don't go anywhere. So I devoted some space in the book to, to talk about, write about the, the mechanisms um, defense mechanisms is what we call it, and also some other other issues that comes with the ego, like uh, 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 grandiose, uh, uh, the, the, the self-centered grandiose uh, behavior and thoughts of, of the ego. Uh, so you know, but but I see the ego is is a very powerful force that 
been working for thousands of years and bringing us uh, up, uh, expanding our consciousness. And it can, and that is very good. We we need that. Yeah. But we also need to go beyond that. And then when we are ready for that, we have to discover how the ego works to transcend it. So that that's also in uh, I'm writing about this uh, also in in the in the book. So I interviewed a musician from Seattle some years back. He's a brilliant yeah. saxophonist and he's blind and he came up with this concept of having a show that sh that that projected either via lasers or light sounds that he was making and he had this whole orchestration set up and it yes. just makes me think about what you're talking about this kind of yeah. amalgamation of it and yes. you know him using his senses his auditory senses which are much stronger than ours oh yeah fascinating explaining how the colors come together and it just reminds me of what you're talking about yeah you know uh, i i studied music therapy in denmark and, and you know there are there, there are also uh, methods developed uh, for deaf people where the music is translated into light, different colors. Yeah. So the, the deaf people can, can feel the rhythm through the floor and, and the loudspeakers, and then they can see uh, the, the colors, yeah. actually. So uh, another another method that that has nothing to do with with colors, but you know, with people who have spastic tensions in their body, uh, a, a professor designed uh, a box with big loudspeakers. They were lying on top of big loudspeakers, and then he played loud music up. And the, the the spastic tensions in the muscles released itself. Wow! So so the power of the sound is tremendous. Absolutely, you know? it is. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a fantastic uh, uh, source. And and you know every every person has a different voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so our voice is actually. Uh, a sound-wise fingerprint, yeah, unique finger fingerprint of who we are. Yeah, everything, everything, almost everything in us, uh, our personality and ego, is is reflected in our sound. So, yeah. usually we are not aware of that, right? But uh, you know, and, and even many many people are afraid to to listen to their own voice when it's recorded. Yeah, right. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. Because we are, we used to hear it from inside. Yeah, yeah. No, that is fascinating. So before we leave third grade, I want to yeah. know, what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream growing up? I was, I was, uh, uh, I started when I was seven years old. Uh, I started um learning classical piano okay from a very very skilled uh, lady very nice lady and i yeah I, I loved it i could actually read music before i actually could could read words in wow. school <laughs> and and i i was very thirsty after learning more and more and more and and i I really developed a love for Chopin, yeah, because he spoke he spoke to my feelings a yeah. lot. Yeah. So so it was extremely helpful. So at that point, I wanted to be a pianist. <laughs> okay. So how did you get to this point? How did you evolve into this place of helping people find themselves and writing books? Oh, that's a long journey. Or it's a long journey. It 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 all started with my own catastrophe when I was seventeen years. <laughs> I was a, uh, I was I was taking a, a quarter tap of LSD, which which was not supposed to do anything actually, but it uh, 
uh, it it broke me totally down. Uh, I was so scared, you know, existential angst all the time. I was I was uh, looking at I was looking into other dimensions. I could see colors. I could see chakras. I could see people's faces are changing all the times and I had no idea what it was. I had no idea of spirituality, psychology or esoteric philosophy. I have no knowledge of chakras or anything, auras and all that. I was just thrown into it and nobody, all the people I tried to uh, uh, ask for help uh, did not know what to do <laughs> yeah so uh, i i even tried to commit suicide several times so unfortunately uh, i'm still here but when i was 20 uh, when i was 21 years old i met my first uh, meditational teacher and by doing his system and receiving transmissions from him, uh, actually my life turned around. And yeah. uh, I, I, I started to get on my feet again. And uh, it was so helpful. It was so helpful. So later on in, in my, in my uh, 20s, I started... Uh, I started to be interested in therapy, psychotherapy. So I started going into psychotherapy. And after three or four years of that, I, uh, I was admitted uh, to the, an education in, in uh, psychotherapy, body psychotherapy, gestalt therapy. And I did that for four years. <clears throat> and immediately after that, I, I uh, uh, started studying music therapy at the university because, you know, it combined my musical background with with the psychological or therapeutic work. So there was a, a fusion uh, there, and and uh, yeah. So I am a late starter in <laughs> in life, but. And then uh, I started. Uh, I started working with people, uh, uh, both in in uh, social habilitation in the public system in Denmark, and later on teaching psychology and psychiatry uh, at the health school. And then uh, I did a lot of work as a supervisor for psychiatric institutions in Denmark. Uh, and along with that career, I was always engaged in different kind of systems, or whether it was a, a shamanic uh, workshops, or, um, or I even practiced Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhism, for five years, and. You know, I tried a lot of things uh, besides my career as a psychotherapist. And then in early 2000, I was uh, introduced to this system, Vibration Sound Color, in Denmark. And uh, I was trained in the basics of that. And uh, then uh, Elias de Mohan was invited to Denmark. And I hosted him for a week in northern Denmark, so I got to uh, I got to I knew I, yeah I was acquainted with him uh, personally. He lived in my house, and I organized workshops and sessions for him. And I actually had translated his first book into Danish, wow. <laughs> but we never got to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, and then uh, he went back to the States and then he called me every day and he's, he, he, he pledged me to come and stay with him. Actually, he was singing, improvising love songs in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, 
So eventually, after several visits, uh, I uh, decided to move there. So we have uh, at that point he was he moved to uh, Canada <clears throat> in Calgary, and uh, we have we had uh, yeah five years together. Yeah, he passed away in two thousand and twelve. Okay. Yeah. So of all of these things that you've accomplished and evolved yeah. into and overcome, what are you the proudest of? Pardon? Of everything that you've done in your life, what are you the proudest of? Oh, um, actually, <clears throat> I would say that I followed Elias to the door. I followed him right up to uh, when he died. Because uh, the, the last couple of years, he was, uh, well, I was together with him 24 hours. I, I took care of everything around him. And, you know, to I feel honored that I could be f there for him uh, till the last moment. That That is, wow, I'm getting, I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. getting emotional now. <laughs> No, I understand. So, I understand. Um, I think I think I'm I'm very happy here that that was possible for me to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's kind of the meaning of life, really. Unconditional love. I think there's a lot that goes goes into that. Um, so, if anyone wants to pick up your book, they want to yeah. reach out. They want to hire you. They're curious. We've yep. scratched the surface. How do they do that? Well. Um, <clears throat> Uh, my books are, are on on sale on Amazon.com, okay. so they can they can reach out um, uh, on Amazon and and find the book there. And uh, I have a um, I have a Facebook uh, also, and there is my contact information. And uh, you just Google Ram Rafael Di Mohan. And then the books uh, and, and, and the Facebook uh, will come up and you just click in and uh, the contact information are on the Facebook. Excellent. This has been wonderful, Raphael. I appreciate you being raw and open. What a wonderful story. Thank you, sir. Best of luck with the book and everything else. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Joe. Absolutely.